Alexa, turn on the candles. Wow, that's hot. Wrong Alexa. Alexa, turn on the candles. All right, I hope that showed up on the camera properly, but you're probably saying to yourselves, Joe, this is some kind of trickery. This is sorcery. This isn't real. Are the ones behind me on? Yes, all the ones behind me even came on. How about that? All right, so you're probably saying he was holding that remote control the whole time. I saw it. He cheated. Well, actually, yes and no. Well, the only part I cheated about here is that these are not real candles. Obviously, there's no fire here, and you don't get burned from them. But these are actually becoming pretty popular. These are just candles that um, they are battery-powered, and they flicker a little bit. But when you buy them, all, the only way to turn them on and off is with this remote control that comes with them. And I said, how cool would it be if you could connect these to your Echo so that you can control them from wherever, from the living room, kitchen, they're up on a shelf. You don't want to climb up there and have to turn on a switch. Now you could hit the remote control, but I just don't like buttons. Well, actually I do like buttons, but I don't, I don't love buttons. Okay. I like them, but I don't love them. If you can do it with your voice, it's even better. So, and by the way, this is really impressive to your friends because nobody else has it. Cause look at this candle. Look at it. There's, there's no wires. There's no wires. If you tried to do this with a, a Wi-Fi candle, what are you going to get? Like a week out of the battery? This thing, it's been sitting down here for a year and, um, the batteries are still good. And I think it's been, two of them have been on the whole time and they still work just fine. So you're probably saying, okay, Joe, cut, cut it. Let's just cut the crap. Let's get to, get to the part where you tell me how you did it. Okay. Here's how it's done. It's very simple. I knew that this remote can talk to this candle and I needed a way to get this to talk to this to get, and just get rid of the remote. We don't want the remote. So one thing you're going to learn about me is I really am not a big fan of the cloud. I like clouds. They have a purpose in life. They make rain. They also do some things for, uh, for the interwebs that are good. But when you're in your house and you want to talk from here to here, why do I need a cloud to do that? So I like things that just talk direct. This doesn't require a skill. You don't have to create an Amazon skill. You don't have to do any of that stuff. You're just going to make it talk to each other. It's very simple. So I, first thing I need to know is how can I get this guy to talk to something electronic? That's the first step that I can make that electronic thing speak the same language as this remote. Now, this is infrared. We know this speaks infrared. We know this speaks to Arduinos. So if you're watching this and you're saying, Joe, what in the world is an Arduino? Well, if you are my age, maybe you heard of the basic stamp. That's kind of the best way I can describe it. It's like a modern day version of the basic stamp. It's what all the kids are playing with now. This is an Arduino. This particular one, there's all kinds of Arduinos, by the way, and there's more, like every day there's a new one coming out. This particular one is the ESP8266 Feather from Adafruit. Now, I love this little guy. I actually use quite a few of their feathers in various products. I have a, an entire basket of feather stuff here, all variations of um, feather wings and, you know, you name it. I kind of collect them all. They're like Pokemon. So. Anyway, you're going to need one of these. I don't remember what it runs. I'm, I'm guessing it's around 20 bucks or so. So this whole project maybe costs about 20 bucks. And by the way, the amount of, it'll impress your friends and they're all going to want it and they can't buy one. So they're going to have to make one. So if you make one and they don't make one, then you have something that they're going to want to tell all their friends about. And it's just, it's, you know, it's the, the scarcity of the whole thing really makes it a lot of fun. All right. So you're going to need an Arduino. And then what you're going to have to do is figure out what is this guy saying to the candle so we can repeat that back. And there's a million ways we could do this. We don't have to do it the way I'm doing it, but I'll tell you what, this is probably the cheapest way and probably the most fun way. And also it looks cool when you're done. I mean, look, look at this, look at this mess that you get. You get this really cool mess. All right. So this right here is, oh, don't look at this. This is for, this is for later. This right here has, um, an infrared receiver, that little guy right there, IR receiver. I'll list all the parts down in the description. I mean, if you get to this video, I don't, I don't expect this video to get more than like 12 views. So if it gets more than 12 and if I get at least one person to comment down below that they want to see the parts list and a, like a blog post with all the code, I'll do that part. But I'm not going to get into the code in this particular video because I'll be here. It'll be 45 minutes long and most people are going to go through the search and go 45 minutes. I'm not clicking on that video in 45 minutes. Get out of here. Like the last video I made was tw what, 20 minutes. What I get seven views. Okay. So, this one is the IR tr uh, receiver. So we're going to take the infrared that's transmitted from the remote and we're going to record it. We're just going to record it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to transmit it back. And then the candles are going to think it's the remote that's talking, but it's not. It's my, it's my Arduino that's talking. It's my little feather here. So the way we do that is we record with this little infrared receiver. Very easy to do. Like I said, I'll, I'll put the part list, parts list in the code um, of, of how this is done. We record with this guy. And then we transmit back over this guy. And for anyone who's never used a breadboard, well, you're going to need a breadboard too if you, if you don't have one. This is how it goes. This guy just clips right into here. And we power it with USB power. 
And I actually threw in a, uh, a battery pack someplace. I don't know where it is. This desk, you can't see the other, the other part of this desk, but you're kind of lucky. I mean, it is like a Radio Shack got hit with a, um, well, if Radio Shack was around today, this is what they would probably sell. That's theoretical. Uh, it looks like a, a modern day version of a Radio Shack got hit with a wrecking ball and it all landed right here. So anyway, I don't know where my battery pack is. It's not necessary. The battery pack just makes it so that let's say you code in your office and your candles are up on a shelf in your living room and you want to run back and forth and test it. And by the way, you could use the same principle for turning off your TV, turning on your TV. A little bit at the end of the video about that. Um, but for now, here we go. Now we power this baby up. Just plug her in. I don't really have anything cool. There's no LEDs that happen here. So what will happen now is we are powered up. And you might've noticed when the candles came on, they did a little flicker in the beginning. That's because what I do is I actually transmit the on button and then the two hour button because on this particular model candle, that means turn it on and then make it shut off two hours later. Alexa, turn on the candles. And there we go. You saw a little flicker there. Now that's it. I just recorded what the remote control said. I transmitted that string back. It's a very short piece of information that's transmitted over infrared. Keep in mind, infrared is very directional, so you have to kind of point it in the general direction. So if this was your living room with a mantle full of candles and it looks like the Vatican in there, you would put this transmitter behind your couch, for example, and then that way it kind of points up. And what I actually did was I made a, a little uh, sled that goes underneath of my Echo. So I can actually put the guts of it inside of here Sit the Echo on top. I actually have a black version, so it matches real nice. And you just give it a second power cord rather than, you know, cutting your, your Echo power supply. 3D printing is a miracle. I mean, it only took me, what, eight hours? It took me 30 minutes to design it, and then, I don't know, eight hours for it to print it out. Isn't that, isn't that how it goes? I'm like 99.9% .9 sure that when I put the battery, when I, when I turned on that camera, it told me that it had like 46 minutes. There's no way that we went 46 minutes. We just started. Anyway. When you do this, you gotta make sure you buy candles. Okay, so let's talk about the hardware that you gotta buy. You gotta buy a kit of candles. You can buy one. You can buy the five pack. I think I got the five pack for like 20 bucks on Amazon. You can get them at Target, Walmart. Doesn't matter where you get them. Doesn't matter who makes them. What matters is that it comes with a remote control. Cause otherwise, what are you gonna listen for? It's, uh, it's sniffing, right? It's what we call it. You're gonna sniff the infrared and you're gonna repeat it back and pretend that you are the remote control. But what's important about the remote is if it's one of those ones that has a button that says on slash off, it's probably not going to work very well because what's going to happen is you're going to transmit the on slash off command and if some of them are already on let's say they didn't hear you the first time some heard you some didn't when you tell them to turn on again you're actually going to turn some of them off and they're going to end up out of sync you're going to end up with some of them on and some of them off you want to avoid remotes that have a single power button you want one that has an on and an off button and that's been my problem with controlling televisions with this setup because a lot of TVs only have an on off button. So when you tell the TV to turn on, if it's already on, you're actually shutting it off, which is problematic with a lot of these new TVs because a lot of times they go, they turn black after a while. You know, it's like they're in sleep mode and you think that the TV is, is actually off. You tell it to turn on and it ends up shutting it off. So maybe it should be Alexa, power cycle my TV. No, not talking to you, sorry. I didn't mean to activate you. So anyway, that's all I've got for this. Like I said, I'll put together a tutorial in my, uh, like in a blog post and link it down below if, anybody wants to see it. I don't know what's going to happen here because this is the first time in a long time that I've started a YouTube channel from zero views, zero subscribers. We'll see if anybody even watches it. I'm not going to go write a blog post if nobody's going to watch. So let me know what you guys thought. Um, I have like a million of other, a million other projects that I've done using this basket of hardware. This is a lab, by the way, this is a, an entire full blown electronics lab. Um, so there's all kinds of fun stuff because if you stop being creative, you get old. That's all.